Honorable Star of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is October 11th. We are at Tuckerborough Bunch Committee. We, uh, have, of course, we have a forum, and so we'll start with <coughs> public input. Then forthcoming, we'll move on to our meeting of, uh, it says August 4th, but it wasn't August 4th. Oh, it's the 30th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. sentence in the uh, second paragraph on the uh, second page, uh, this is quite right, uh, what I said was, um, quote, his thought is the COLA distribution could be a block amount for each employee versus based on the percentage of the current salary. So I would just ask that that change be made. And then also, um, if I'm reading the uh, third paragraph on the third page correctly, I think on the fourth line, the word assessment probably ought to be reassessment. Um, I think that that was the, the DRA requirement, was that we reassess. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would make that uh, suggestion that we make that change. I don't know. I, uh, it, it wasn't the D, that the assessment is required by the DRA. It was the reassessment action was required by the DRA because the assessment became out of balance, out of balance for uh, uh, recent sales. So uh, I think that's the way I would interpret that sentence. And so uh, that would be my suggestion. <coughs> All right, then, well, there are, we have a motion and a second. We have Gary's changes. All those in favor of the motion with the uh, noted Aye. changes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on then. <coughs> Chairman's comments. A couple things this evening. Uh, <coughs> Penny uh, let me know earlier the, uh, that she was not going to be able to serve on the uh, CIP. I reached out to everybody and nobody came forward, so I am now our representative to the CIP and I'll fulfill that particular duty until the report is done. And the other thing is that what I failed to talk about at our first meeting were two things that I think are important to mention as chairman. First of all is that I have never been a big fan of reconsideration on votes. I think we have ample time to discuss things. <clears throat> we have ample time to review our materials well before our meetings so that you know you can either look at them online or you can, you can pick up your paperwork certainly several days before, the, uh, before our meeting. So please have your questions ready. Uh, and once we make our decisions and make our vote, I'd like to keep it that way without having to go back and rehash it and a lot of other stuff. With that in mind, we'll move on to the meeting of the evening. The first line I'm dealing with tonight is executive. Could I just ask a question? Sure. This would not be. So as we go down through these, um, Chip, if you would be so kind to let us know how the selectmen voted on all of these prior to us having a discussion, like if it was unanimous, 
you know, one to two, two to one, whatnot, as we go through these, <coughs> just so that we kind of have a mindset as we are starting to look at these ourselves, because they've already been approved by you, correct? Just if if we could just like executive, you know, was that a unanimous vote? Okay, I'll definitely do that on the board. I can't do it tonight. You can't do that tonight. Well, I can't remember. Oh, you can't remember. You know that guy voted. Against one budget, but I don't remember which one it was. Would it be okay if, if they remembered if we could ask them tonight? <coughs> well, I it was forward? executive. Was it executive? Yeah. Okay. I just I just thought it would maybe be helpful for us if we knew how the selectmen voted just while we did our well, it's evaluation. Well, it's helpful to know, but then again, I it's, it's that. still our decision whether right our recommendation. I, I understand that, but they vote for things all the time that we might not necessarily agree with. I just would like to have another one. Right. So noted. Thank you. Okay, so here we are. Anything out of the ordinary besides? No, the only change in the uh, executive of any note is the uh, COLA increase on the administrative assistant. There's nothing in there. Administrative secretary. Deputy. Um, so that one stayed the same. <clears throat> the administrative overtime, although we didn't spend any on it this year, we're expecting that that line's going to get hit a little bit in the coming year with the um, working of grants. Um, and again, the uh, clerical assistant has is probably going to be significantly more than $790 spent by the end of the year because we are working on, I think, three different grant proposals that are out there. Yeah. And that's Susan who's working on that. The, moderate, <coughs> the moderator has gone down because we're down to two. The one election, I think. Yeah, for next year. Yeah, just to, you know, <coughs> So the total budget's up by 9000 $150. Which is essential. I failed to mention, by the way, of course, that the second did uh, move for 7.4% COA. So that's what we're dealing with when you start to wonder where the number is coming from. It's just, just the COA. Okay, I'm sorry. Did okay. I, I thought that happened last week. No. Could I just ask you about that COA? Sure. Is that the recommendation from the state? Is that how yeah. that's derived? How do you derive that? There's the, the uh, there's a national inflation rate and then right. there's a, a New England rate. The New mm -hmm. England rate set by or tabulated by um, I forget the name of the organization, but it is a, a government organization that does a regional rate. And it was at seven nine in October, but so that's when we set the the okay. cola. Do we have to use that amount, or the selectmen have to use that amount? No, no. So no. why are you using the full amount this year? We will always use. The full okay, amount. but. Have you looked at other ways of handling it? Because Henry has some <coughs> interesting ideas, and I also thought about what could be done with that. Okay. My idea was we would look for the mean of the salaries, and everyone who was below the mean would be receive the full seven point and change because those are lower paid employees, and the people above the mean would just take the mean amount. So if it's fifty thousand dollars is your mean, then uh, just easily seven percent, not seven point four. That'd be about thirty five hundred, and then mm -hmm. the people above that could each get the flat amount okay, of thirty five hundred. That, that would presume that we haven't done a wage scale study, which we have. Yes, I understand. Okay, so it, was that our, recent? All of our employees have been reviewed as far as the wage scale in the state mm -hmm. for similar employment. So, right, and they're all above the 75th percentile. So, so they're above the 75th percentile and we're giving them... Uh, they're above the 75th percentile for that job. So 100% of the percentile would be... <coughs> right. That's what 
the highest mm -hmm. paid worker in that job is getting. Right. So we're within a, the middle of that range. So if we're going to go and do a, a wage scale study just on, what, what would you base it on? Is it based just on the economy? Well, it's, it would be based on the total salaries for the year. Mm -hmm. And then determine your mean. <coughs> and how do you determine the mean? In, well, your, in your calculation? Well, it would be the, the half. Of the, what? Of the total salaries. So it, okay, so if you've got a total salary of a million dollars, then 500,000 is half of it. Mm -hmm. So saying? everyone at 500,000 and down would get the full amount of the uh, cost of living increase and people at five, 501 or whatever the number would be okay. would just get a fixed fee, a fixed amount. Of how much? As I use 50,000 as the example, okay. it's $3,500. All of them would get $3,500 because to give somebody who's in the over 100,000 Okay. $7,000 is a lot of money, and that person, although they're working, as Gary has said in the past, mm -hmm. and they deserve a uh, cost of living increase, I would say that most people are not getting 7.4% cost of living. They're probably lucky if they get four. Most people being out in the workplace? Out in the workplace. Okay. <clears throat> I, uh, I appreciate your comments, and uh, I think actually if we were to do something like that, which I, I don't think we're probably going to be doing that, no. but uh, I think that what we have to say to ourselves is what does a cost of living adjustment really do? And I think the fairest thing to do is to give every employee a block amount, mm -hmm. and that block amount would be very simply we take last year's total salaries, find out what the figure for 7.4% of that would be, mm -hmm. divide it by the number of employees, and hand each employee that amount of money. Mm -hmm. I know, Gordon, Gordon is having the apple. You're kind company. of setting my hair now, on fire because I'm sorry. This okay, is... well, let me finish my statement. I, I, I know we don't, don't agree, but that's... now. The only thing that would change that formula is if an employee is not working full time. So if an employee was working 50% time, half time, then they would get half percent of that. So it would be weighted by mm -hmm. Now, to my way of thinking, everyone who's working is going to be faced with the same utility bills, um, the same cost for putting food on their table. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea of a COLA is not to reimburse someone for the skill set that they have. Mm -hmm. It's to help them get through a difficult time when there's rapid inflation. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think that comparing salaries against uh, what the averages might be throughout the community or throughout the state have any bearing on the COLA. The COLA is to, is to make people a little bit whole relative to the increased expenses that they're faced with. Okay. So that, that's my thing. All right. okay. well, then, we're saying then, the same thing in a sense, but I, I would well, disagree. Then we're going to end up, let's, let's just say right now, then we're going to throw the whole weight scale out. Well, Chip, is all, all, Chip has pointed out before that yeah. whereas we are not a union shop in town, and that the selectmen are essentially negotiating each position with each employee, correct? correct. But, and that's the way it's going to be from now on. But you, because otherwise, yeah. you were part of the, you were on the budget committee when they did the big study. Yes. When we set up this wage scale. Right. You set up a, essentially a step and track system. Is correct? that what I'm saying? Step and track. Yeah. So many years, levels of experience, things right, like right, that. Right, that right, right. Right. And now we're going to throw that all out. And I'm sorry, that's just, that's, each one of we, those. that is not our job. <laughs> well, that I is agree their job. I, I don't see how we are going to come back in I, and do their job. I agree with you completely in the sense that <coughs> not, the budget committee is not here to make policy, salary policy. I agree with that completely. All I'm saying is that I think we do have a responsibility to at least point out that Using a percentage of salary as a way to make someone a little bit better off relative to cost of living standards 
is not the way to go because what it's, what it's doing, it's not a straight line. It's a, it's a, a, a curve that goes up like this, and the people who are uh, in the high salary bracket, they get 7%, and it's a huge number, and someone that's in the low salary bracket, they are a lot less prepared to meet the inflationary pressures based on the 7.5% maybe the 15 or 20 or 25 thousand dollars that they and have. they are also uh, dealing that you're also not even factoring in level of responsibility for the position well cost of living doesn't have anything to do with this one, i'm sorry we, this is this is not well it's not have, our own society if we have a wage scale which we do yeah two things to remember one they got a two percent cost of living increase last year the inflation that you speak of started well before this coming January. Yeah. So they've had a 2% increase in the 2020 salary to, or 2021 salary to accommodate for the cost of living during 2022. We're at 7.9, which hopefully is going to bring them back into some sort of parity with regard to the economy. Lastly, we have one employee is cresting a hundred thousand dollars that one employee would be at 7.4 getting a 7400 dollar increase over the course of the year yeah so what are we talking 550 dollars a month or 600 dollars a month so it's not some enormous benefit to that person at the very top of the wage scale the person making fifty thousand dollars is going to get half of that <coughs> So what we try to do is balance this out of cost against uh, services. And I think it's a, it's a decent system. Well, I, I, again, I understand the system, I'm, but these are extraordinary times. That's the problem. It's not extraordinary exactly. though, Gary. I mean, I remember when inflation was 21%. Well, sure, and I do too. Okay, I remember when six or 7% yeah. was not out of the ordinary. It's extraordinary only because for the last 15 or 18 years, it's been at 1%. Right. That's what makes it extraordinary today. That's right. So. I think the more important factor here is that we pay people market compensation. Right. With, with a facility that we own that has 18 open positions right now, and people being offered more and more money by every single person that wants to hire people to fill up a line at their own facility, seems to me that the most important thing is that we should go through these people's compensation that we're paying them at market and then we're not going to lose them tomorrow okay. from, from a better offer. So that to me is sort of the, to me was really the question I'd be asking with each one of these people. And, that, and that's, why, <clears throat> that's why we review the salaries of similar positions throughout the state on a reasonably regular basis so that we are paying market rate. I mean, just as an aside, the police chief posited this notion that we're that other police departments are offer, offering up to a ten thousand dollar signing bonus for police officers, and I said, not in my lifetime is it going to happen in Tuftonboro. But he says that is what the market's generating out. And he's right. I'm telling I'm you, sure, I'm sure he's right. Because right. like you go down any street here where they're trying to hire people and they're saying, come join us, four thousand dollar signing yeah. bonus. Yeah. Just, it's, you know, that's the reality around it. I, can I have two? On this specific, uh, when I can finish this conversation? No, I'm, I'm done. Sorry. I just, um, I just, just, if I heard this correctly, I know you guys say you periodically examine the step. That's fine. I'm not going to argue that argument because I don't get a solid answer. But you, did you say that our employees are in the 75th percentile? on the market on average, on average. I'm, not gonna, I, I, I'm just I saying on average right okay so right. we're not 50 percent we're 75 percent on average right because there's some sure that are below right. and i'm sure there's some that are above right we're trying to stay in the middle of the curve mm -hmm. curve so we're not mm -hmm. at 100 percent of no, but the, I, the wage you scale. just answered my question no yeah and that's also very much a tank, right? that kind of mm -hmm. way on i think anyway I, I have two questions. One, these, so the increases that these two people got were not 7.4%, they're 9 point something percent. Right. Right, so there was obviously a merit increase. There was a step increase for each of them. Exactly. As well. So that, that was decided based on performance and evaluations. Right. I'm assuming, right? And then I'm just curious, because I was, I'm a newbie on this thing, because when I go back to 
there was a significant increase that happened, which is interesting, from 20 <coughs> to 21 in both these positions. And I mean, really pretty dramatic increases. Including one looks like it's the third, and the other one looks like I don't know how, how 20 to 20. 20 to 21 went from 45 to 60 in administrative secretary. I have to look at how that happened. And also from 43 to, and the only reason 43 to 55 mm -hmm. went up under salary negotiations. We lost the person that was in that, pos in that position. We had to negotiate a new salary for, and hired someone with experience in that position as opposed to someone without. Uh, so the market spoke. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It would be good, I don't know, it would be good to understand as we move through, although this going from back to 60 to 54 again, so I don't understand that. The, the 60 number may not be correct, right, for 2021? I'm just, I, it, it's too much of an increase or an anomaly, it's you know, $15,000. So something else happened during that period of time, but I have to refresh my memory. Yeah, no, I think what's going on is that the, the, the 55 for the nurse system went down to 51. I think there's a mix in these two numbers. Because this person didn't get a, get a decrease this year. The first person didn't go from 55 to 51. Right. And then the other person did go from 49 to 60. So I think we should try and get these numbers correct. Possibly. The historical numbers we can work yeah. on. Yeah. Well, I just think it's part of the record, right? So we're not. Because you wouldn't, every, I don't know which number's wrong. I don't know whether it's a 22 budget number that's wrong or the 21 action number that's wrong. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion right. that we approve the budget request uh, made by the selectmen of $129,180 for the executive. Jennifer. Any motion? Is there a second? Well, I'll second it for discussion. All Obviously, right. there's some concerns still. So, all right. All right, I'll take back my motion. I, I just have a problem because I understand what you're saying about the market and I understand the supply and demand. It's going to change and it's just like in private enterprise. Mm -hmm. for. I'm just using this as a very simple example. Down the street, they're looking for somebody. They're going to have to hire a laborer. If they're, uh, I'll go even more simple. You go to the restaurants right now. They can't hire anybody. Right now, they're hiring dishwashers for $20 an hour. A year ago, they were paying them 12 bucks an hour. What's going to end up happening is we're going to have a correction. It's going to happen. Oh, it's coming. You. And unfortunately, <coughs> this is a municipality. It's not like private. It's your Chip's 100% right. It is not like your private mm -hmm. enterprise and your private business sector. But you can only go so far, even in this type of thing. So what's going to happen is, you know, we're going to have these salaries, which everybody deserves to get paid well. I'm not disagreeing with that. But between the step and the cost of living, which, in my opinion, I think the 7.9 is too high, that's going to, it's going to create another host of problems. That's where I have the difficulty. The step, it is what it is. They did the wage study, I understand that. I just, I'm having problems with the 7.9. And that's where I'm having mm -hmm. a large, big problem. Because we know it's going to change. And these people are going to be making these salaries that are going to have to be justified. It's not, it has nothing to do with how they work and how they perform in their job. It's what is actually fair and equitable for that job. And the reason why I asked Chip about, you know, where are you, where are we in the wage area? Mm -hmm. We're at 75%, generally speaking. I would feel personally more comfortable if we were in the 50%, if we're doing, you know, you, but we're not. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's where I'm having a difficulty. Okay. I'm not, I'm not saying that people don't deserve to be paid mm -hmm. well. What I'm saying is this, our economy is going to correct and our wages are going to be corrected and things are going to change. And I don't like the trend because it's going to come back. Right. That's it. So by your line of reasoning, we're not going to be voting on any shout. You're not going to be voting on any salary related budget lines for the season. 
I don't know. I just, every, every budget's different, every, every salary's different. As he said, some of our salaries are higher, some of our salaries are lower. Every budget's different. I think, I think the, uh, I think there are two things that I would say. One is that, I think Chip is correct when he says that the increase they got last year, for most other businesses, there's been interim increases in, in compensation to people that have gone into, it, gone into effect that these people didn't get the benefit of because of their annual review. That's just the reality. People have been private owners and businesses have been increased, which would be another competitor for these people, and then increasing salaries as they go along. And I think the other thing is, I don't know. If I was for sure there was going to be a correction, I wouldn't be sitting here. I'd be sitting on some island in a very nice beach because that's, you know, it's very hard to actually know whether these things are going to happen. But I think there's more likely to be a recession of some kind, but I'm not sure that wages are going to go back to where they were before. But well, that's what Jamie it's Diamond a crystal said. ball. Six to, uh, six to seven months, he predicts that there will be a recession. Right, but I don't know where the wages are going to go back. I don't know about wages. I think we're there right now. But yeah. Well, I don't think we're there right now because of um, uh, unemployment is at 3.5 and they can't get enough people to fill the jobs. Yeah. I have one other question. Um, when you, I, I, Gordon Schreit, I was around when we had the, the wage study and everything, but one, one of the things that the budget committee was not involved with at that time was um, setting any kind of policy um, for when a person would move from one step to another. That was strictly a matter of uh, the, uh, the selectmen um, coming up with their own policy. What is the policy? on how a person from year to year uh, moves along from one step to another. Well, it's subjective. I mean, it, we'd have to go employee by employee. To, well, to, well that, what I'm saying is, that, is it because a okay, person's you, job changes? You assume more responsibility okay. if something in your job has changed that requires right. expertise in some degree. Right. If, I mean, one of the reasons that we do steps in this in, in the administration budget mm -hmm. is to try to staff down to two people mm -hmm. or two and a half people. Right. I mean, you're running a four million dollar business with two clerical people and a tax collector. Yeah. So, rather than adding personnel to take on other duties like what, whatever DRA might come up with or whatever some other state agency might require from us, we try to get our two people. To do all of that work mm -hmm. and do it efficiently, right. so that's that's really the driving force. I mean, if you want to look at the steps, you're talking a, a total of uh, twenty twenty two hundred dollars. So that's that's the cost this year on the steps for these two people. Okay. But but so by the policy then, if a, if a person's job doesn't change from one year to the next, mm -hmm. um, they would not be moved along. Yeah, and that's happened any number of times. I mean, the okay. right. fire department last year, I know okay. the transfer station, okay. last, either last year or the year before. Okay. So yeah, there's, and we require a certain amount of effort to stay ahead of the right. job. Right. Right. So, so I don't uh, understand that, right? because I'm, I'm not sure I understood your, your question when you said, if they don't change if they don't have any increase in responsibilities, if the scope of their work does not change from one year to the next. Okay, that's different though here, just so you know. Yeah. It's not the scope of their work. They're still an administrative assistant. They're still uh, transfer station level two. Yeah. But if the scope of the work or the amount of work changes and, right. the, and the skill level to accomplish that changes, sure. which is the state will come up with new requirements for how to do any number of things. The I'm just trying to understand it. I'm not arguing right. that one way or the other. I just, I mean, I just want to make sure I understand clearly that, that the steps are... We're not letting people sit on their hands and just do the same work they did five years ago. That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. They have to stay abreast of all of the laws and all the changes in the sure. regulations and all the rest of it. Okay. All right. All right. Which makes them much more marketable. So either one of these people could go out and get a job at yeah. Multiboro or right. Ossipi or wherever they want to pay more money. Now, the, the, um, the 
figures that are within each step, mm -hmm. um, they change from year to year, no. or they just stay fixed. The steps are two percent steps. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So that's fixed. Okay, that's fixed. It's you just might add more two percent ones if you get out to the end of the. No, it's always two percent. But it's the cola will change the dollar amount. That's right. So That's the, right. Do, the wage scale changes annually with cola. Okay. And so it's two percent of a larger number, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I just want to be clear. I'm not. The reason why I'm not proving this right now is because I'd like to see the corrections made and make sure I understand the sheets that they that the okay. numbers are because I don't think these numbers are one of the sets of numbers are not correct so I'm you know I'm not a historical number is not correct yeah but I'm, I'm basing my decision on what's going on in front of you based on historical numbers right I'll agree that the that those numbers do not jive no yeah. no they don't and uh, and I have I'm, I emphasize of not being able to understand it when you're very new at it I, I, there will be a correction get those numbers straight or an explanation yeah I guess what I'm saying is I'm fine with this number. I just want to make sure that I'm fine with this number based on what I'm seeing here. I just want to make sure what I'm seeing here is correct. Are you asking to maybe table it until next meeting yeah. or next I correction? Would, I definitely think we should probably okay. do that based on this. I think maybe better. You think the numbers are right? No, no. I'm, I, don't, I don't think these numbers are right or the historical numbers are right. But if you want to have a long discussion about wages, and no, 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 scale. no, no, no. I, I that's going to get even more intense when the fire department shows up and when the police department shows up and when the <coughs> transfer station shows up. So this amount of wage is a de minimus amount when you look at the whole town. I'm not arguing with you. Okay. I'm actually, I don't think I'm we're actually, actually, I don't arguing, think arguing, we're arguing about the wages, sir. What I'm saying no, is I just fine. want to get the right yeah. numbers down here. I'm fine. Yeah. I, just want I, would, I would advocate, as Rob was saying, his table until you get some good <laughs> historical numbers. Okay. Then we can make a decision. All right. Mr. Chairman, I uh, make a motion that we table this for our next meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Rose and Kay Wright. Aye. Aye. All right. So we'll put this to the side. This is table. Next is 4152, reevaluation. The numbers that were given to us in our packets have been amended. The sheet that came to us that we got this evening. You want to talk about that one too? Okay, the number I have for the 2023 proposed budget is 41,196. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just got one for 49,950. Okay. Jim, please. Pardon? Yeah. Yes, you're right. Chip was not at the meeting when Kathy brought in the revised figure for us. Okay. She, she was not able to, at, that, at the time she printed those out, didn't have the right number for Mr. Sansusi's services and the assessments on the utilities. Okay. And so it's a contract. So she added about $9,000 into that at our meeting. Okay. And that's why you have the revised number. Thank you very much. That's all right. That's why I'm here. Uh, Help out. Thank you. You're welcome. My question was, in, in 2022, uh, our budget was 88000 to do a complete reval of the town, and now we're looking at not quite $50,000 to do a partial reval. No, we're back to $50,000, which was the relatively the same amount that we've had like in 2017 and 2018. 2020, 2021. Well, that, so that, that, so that begs the question, how could they do the whole town for 88 and do a partial for... Well, because of the way they did the whole town. And when we sat here with DRA <clears throat> to negotiate how the, how this reevaluation was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And they came up between Rod and, and the Department of Revenue Administration came up with a methodology where they could okay. do it for 88,000. Rather, I remember the one in the early 2000s. That's fine. Over 100 grand. So. Answer my question. Thank you. Okay. So now we're back to just the ongoing every year partial. Were these were these, were these the contracts? Were they got from RFPs <coughs> back when we did them? Were they RF? Were they done with our market-based RFP? Right. We, had, we we 
haven't done a new RFP on the assessor for, I think it's just five years. So it'll go out for an RFP in 2023, for 2024 and forward. Okay. Yeah. So this is a contract about, like it's fixed. Right, although it's negotiated annually, it is it's a contract, right? We're not doing it internally for $49,000. Oh, so we, we actually negotiate with, with the assessor, the assessor, even though we have a contract, we contract to use them, but we, the we fee amounts. Have, right, we have a contract to use them, and I think for a while there was a escalation clause, and now we're talking about each each year. You know what's what's the cost going to be? So, we'd be kind of curious to know how that conversation went, because I mean, if you have just reappraised the entire town. Whether you like it or not, what the numbers are, you have done that work. It seems like 2023 is going to be relatively light lifting. It is, but it's going to be exactly like 2017 and 2016. But what about if we have much longer since we had a full reval? Yeah. Well, 2019 was at 83,594. So that was a reevaluation as well. So what we had done in the historically, what we've done was evaluate the town's real estate and that's the number. And we didn't have an assessor on board. We didn't have anybody working daily or weekly for the town. And we just watched the rate however it went and DRA would demand a, a reassessment at some point in time and we, Previous boards of select and may take the RA's demand to heart, and sometimes they didn't, and you just pushed it off for a few more years. And it, the consequence of that was that when we actually did a reevaluation, and I'm, I'm historically, I think it was like 2001 or 2002, we had to go to every single, our assessor had to go to every single property and reevaluate that property completely. It cost well over $100,000. So to avoid that major cost on a five-year basis, the election was made not by this board or me or anybody, but by a board of selectmen to do partial reevaluation in zones every year. Okay. So I don't know what zone is going on in 2023, but there's going to be a look at all the houses in that particular area so that we're doing it on a rotating basis as opposed to waiting five years and doing one big shot. A big money. Okay. I don't know if it makes sense. I, I don't know whether it makes sense to do that or just say, take a holiday for this next year, save 55 yeah. grand and 49, 49 grand. No, right. yeah, 49 grand. Right. And, you know, is this something that a reserve account could be set up so that if we did it like every, on the average, does it come out to be like maybe every three or four years, but if we, and then rather than doing a section of the town each year, we just did the whole town every three or four years, but mm -hmm. bank a little bit of money in advance to, to get to the 150000 that it would cost us. It seems to me that there's got to be some inequities somewhere in the system if we're just doing a portion of the town. At a, at a time. It's always going to get adjusted. So just to give you a, an update on how this works. Yeah. Last year, before we started the current revaluation, we were at 74%. Yeah. So the state, DRA, when they set the tax rate, calculates that everybody's taxes have to go up 26%. So everybody gets an increase of 26% on their valuation clerically. That's not the fair way to do things because if one section of town is going up dramatically yeah. and the other section of town is muddling along, these people over here that have gotten the dramatic increase in value yeah. are only getting a, a small portion of the increase in, in cost. When you say section, do you mean waterfront people as opposed to non-waterfront and that right. type of thing? Or is that right? Yeah. Okay. So if, if a, I mean, if the average price on waterfront goes from 800000 to a million, yeah. and the average house on Ledge Hill Road goes from you know, 500000 to 
$550,000. Yeah. Yeah. The person on the lake is getting a bigger bump in their value and paying less percentage of the actual cost to running the town. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be equal. Everybody's got to pay an equal amount or an equal percentage, if you will. So yeah. if everybody's at 100%. <coughs> but 100% of my house maybe is not a 26% increase over last year. Yeah. yeah. But 100% of someone else's house on the lake <coughs> might be a 50% increase right. over last year. Okay. Okay. I wonder, I'm wondering, I don't know what the process was. I saw the email back here where somebody just emails me asking for what the number was and whether there's any point in having these guys come in and speak to you and say, speak to the selectmen and do a presentation as to why the number is 49,000 versus 35,000 and what, they have, what, what would change that cost and reduce it. Well, know. when we put out the new RFP, we'll see what the market wants to charge us. I mean, that's the deal. So if you want to, you know, I'm not going to go to the, our current assessor with $35,000 and expect him to stay, because that's not the that's not the deal he cut with us to present. So you have the fixed amount that you're telling me. Or well, he doesn't just, have a fixed amount. I'm just trying. To, I thought this was a negotiated amount every year. Yeah, it's been negotiated. This okay, year. so this is done. This is okay. what he this is what he's looking for. So if you want to, so if we put it out on the street again in 2023. I doubt it will come back at thirty-five thousand, but maybe it does. So we go with the guy for thirty-five grand. Just to clarify again, just so we have a contract that we're obligated to stay with him for five years, but it's not at a fixed rate. He's able we, we negotiate that rate, but if we give him a rate it doesn't like, he says go pound sample. We're obligated to him for that five years. Is that right? We have signed a contract with him for five years to right. our assessment, but not at a lock rate. And. There was a rate established, but the rate of increase from the whatever costs, inflation, whatever the cost increases are, you can come in and negotiate a different different number. It's coming up though for 2024, is that what you're saying? 2023. Well, well 2024, right? Yeah, because right, he's, right. he's, yeah, so it is coming up for renegotiation in the next cycle. Yeah. And he is, he's not a town employee, so it's not as if we can not pay him. Maybe you guys should take a holiday on these assessments. Got the taxes. Motion. I make a motion to approve the selectman's request for the reevaluation of property assessor. For forty-nine thousand five hundred and ninety-six dollars. Second. Moving second. We have further discussion on this. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. We will have planning and zone. I just have one question. Sure. Um, why are there no subdivision engineering fees? asked for. I mean, I know sometimes it's zeroed out and it's an in and out, but there's building going on again. Right. And it's not as if... They can't take them someplace else. I well, no, no, no. It's an in and out. Right. So the developer always pays the town's engineer. And then, so what, what we've done in the past is actually paid the engineer out of the town account mm -hmm. and then get reimbursed by the developer. So is that and policy changed? I'm seeing that it's changed because that's this is the budget that the planning and zoning gave, or planning department gave us. Well, the department had requested it. So they must have changed it. And that's fine. If they want to make sure if in their in their planning and zoning. No, no, no. He asked for it anyway. Is what I'm saying. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> no, I hear you. I hear what okay. you're saying. He's asked for it anyway, which, like I said, if they change the policy, it's fine. Being on the planning board forever, you, I mean, I understand. If that would be great if it was changed, but he asked for it, but you said no. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm, con that's why my concern was there. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And I think we're now at zero again. 
Because they spent no money last year. No, but the two previous years they did, and there is building going on. So right. I guess that's my question as to why that happened. And that, and you know better than I do because you're in the planning board, but that's a bookkeeping event. So the developer has to pay that fee, and it, it ends up coming back as. It does, uh, but sometimes. Like I said, yeah. you know, if the policy was, if they did change the policy, that's perfectly well, fine. Well, I know they reviewed no... all of their fees, mm -hmm. so that changed as well. I just, that that was glaring because if, if they had requested zero, I would have even asked you because, yes, mm -hmm. that would have meant a, you know, a procedural change. It does not look like there's a procedural change there. So if there is something that happens, that's going to be in the negative. That's my only comment other than that. Okay. Everything else looks... So along, along, along those same lines, the department head is asking for 7500 bucks across the last three pieces here, master plan, subdivision, and planning consultant fees. Mm -hmm. And you just lumped it all into planning consultant fees. Was, was there a, a reason for that debate between the department and, you and the selectmen? Yeah, why, why, why did okay, the master plan? The master plan implementation was reduced because I'm not going to walk this through. Okay, they have, they have an opportunity to hire one person to do a partial job on the master plan implementation and then advise them occasionally on planning consulting. And we've had some personnel changes on the planning board and it was the selectman's feeling that we could hire this same consultant for five thousand dollars to do both the master plan and the consulting and be at all of the developers meetings with the planning board so that that was what was driving that so that's the rough comparison is the 2500 pulled together down to that planning and then right. I'm going to say we belong to release from your planning commission. Yeah, we're already paying that, but the regional planning commission won't do our planning for us. They won't, but there's a lot more. I mean, five grand. Well, we have to be members of the Lakes Region Planning Commission for a lot of other mm -hmm. reasons other than just planning. I understand. And I, I don't think that our planning, our, our chairman of the planning board can that he could get the Lakes Region Planning Commission to come over and oversee a development plan, for instance. So are you saying it's because the current planning board staff is has less experience than previous staffs? I think that they have a little less experience, but I think more importantly, they're finding more complex issues. So I don't think any planning board we've currently had or recently had would be able to address some of the issues that we're running up against or have in the past year or so. You know, whether it's Farm Island or whatever other issues have come up. Did this also have an impact somewhat on their legal, what you, when we get to our legal line? Well, hopefully it's going to make the legal line a little less. And well, I, the reason I ask, I was happy to be at the meeting with but it, when Gary was discussing this with Selectman, and he did mention that implement, implementation of this was probably going to have an effect on their uh, to lower the legal legal line. Of course, mm -hmm. the, their legal all gets tied into the, the legal expense for the whole town. So I think that's going for them. So if you look at the two numbers, I mean the master plan twenty three. The request was 2500 and the planning consultant was 2500 so we just combined those two numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you is this, is this a shared admin assistant? I'm sorry? Is this a shared? Shared or partial? Yeah, right, right. That's... She's 14 right. hours. 14 <laughs> hours? Mm -hmm. Yep. And is that consistent each year from year to year? Because I'm wondering why the increase is not... The color is not in here at all. Okay, so currently they've expended seventy-three hundred dollars out of the fourteen thousand, and our budgeting policy is generally to leave lines alone that might be impacted differently in a different year. As long as they're not significantly off. Mm -hmm. 
machine last year made it 13 to 80. Okay. Thank you. Hi. I'm good. I got off. I caught up. Yeah, I'm good. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're good. <clears throat> okay. okay, I'll make a motion uh, to approve the selectman's request of $34,234 for the general fund planning and zoning. Second. Moving second. Do we have further discussion on this? And forthcoming, those in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. For the government. <clears throat> so on the joint loss safety committee, the actual expenses for 22 are, are posted at $160. We had 150 budgeted. I think there's still a couple more dollars to come in on that, so we increased that budget to 200. The uh, capital improvements committee budget um, we dropped by $25. And that's essentially just for printing the report. Right. I'm sorry. So the total budget of $500 for this. May I make a motion that we um, accept the selectman's request of $500 for the general fund other general government? Second. Second. Moving second for further discussion. Favor aye. 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 Opposed? Building mm -hmm. inspections. That's not here. You wrote a lovely note. I beg your pardon? He wrote a lovely note. 4240? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, 4240. <clears throat> Once again, this one looks essentially to be wage driven. Yeah, the only, uh, you've got a, a $200 increase in fuel. Um, vehicle maintenance has gone up because we did overspend that particular line. It's at 600, we spent 920. <coughs> I believe there's another, another bill coming in on the vehicle. Um, and, uh, All right, I make a motion that we accept the selectman's request of $77,958 for general fund building inspection. Second. Move from May and seconded. For a discussion on this? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? On the highways and streets, 4313. Mm -hmm. This is block work. This I'm working assumption is not including Union Wharf. It's not a, well, actually, we use this particular line, docking bridges, for, <coughs> excuse me, for permitting purposes. So it would be, it could be impacted a little by um, Union North, but I think we're through the permitting process completely, but I thought that would pass. Um, we've got uh, Lake Street permitting that we're still need to get done, and what we'll do, I'm sure, is if there's anything left on Union Wharf, we'll, we'll encumber. Because right now we've got $2,300, $2,200 left in the 22 budget, 2022 budget. So if we have anything left in Union Wharf, we'll So we still have not, those, those permits have not been finalized yet? It still has to go through the governor and council. Oh, okay. Because we had to do a property line adjustment I knew with, that. with the neighbor. But yeah, as far as we know, DES is up completely on board with what we're, what we're okay. up to. Okay, I 
make a motion that we accept the 2023 selectman's request of $5,000 for other highways and streets. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second? Any further questions? Discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Vote. Directory assistance. What's the vote per? 12,250. What are we looking at now? Chip? 4442. No, I was looking at the budget number. 4442. Oh, she does all your filing for you, too? Yeah, yeah, I can't remember everything going on. I know you can, but you're the top of your older. game. <laughs> okay, and direct assistance. This is welfare. So that's what people get when they're in trouble. The shelter, we've gone up $1,000 because we did overspend that line by $826 so far this year. Fuel, we went up $1,500. $1, um, because fuel costs are growing up. Medical services have gone up $500 on that line item. Food has gone down by 500 because of uh, local charitable organizations stepping up on that. Electric and telephone has gone up by $1,500. And on miscellaneous is $250. On the electrical and telephone, that's the budget request that I'm hoping that you guys go through. But just to give you a heads up, we're working with um, not the telephone company, but the electrical utility provider to see if we can mitigate any sort of issues that our, that our consumers have. Um, and there are also local organizations that are helping out considerably on that. So, although we've only tapped, well, we overspent a lot by $92 this year so far. <clears throat> that, that, that's not the complete um, welfare request. So a lot of the money that is going to pay for that particular line is coming from churches or different sort of organizations that are helping our citizens out. Well, I'm not really curious, if somebody just Somebody just makes a request they to the town and it's taken care of, or boy, wouldn't that be nice? Well, I'm I do that. If this has something to do, <laughs> my question has to do with the process. Okay. So it's a pretty extensive process. Okay. And I think it's onerously excessive, but that's just me. But there's financial statements, bank records, um, rental agreements, bills. Checking account statements going back, I think, close to six months or even longer if there's an anomaly going on. Um, other bank accounts. So it's a pretty extensive search before mm -hmm. the town gets to cutting a check. And actually, I mean, just as an aside, we've gotten back, I think, close to $7,000 worth of um, money from welfare liens. So if you want a piece of property mm -hmm. and you come in and you say, I don't have any money to pay for my groceries, that piece of property is going to have a lien on it. You should, for the groceries, not generally, but if it's like a thousand dollar electric bill, all of a sudden there's a thousand dollars on the on the property as a lien that's registered over at the county. And if the property sells or if the person comes into some money and it's Feels good about it, but we, we we do collect quite a lot back from from that system, as well as helping people, which is what the budget for. Well, I guess I raised the point because when I saw this number, I said to myself, "Is that going to be enough?" Well, it's just the half cent. Yeah, yeah. This, we, is this four thousand going to be enough? We uh, we talk it's extensive. Well, the selectman and I did, mm -hmm. and the welfare officer and I did. And this, this is the appropriate budget we feel. That said, we, as a selectman, if, if for some reason this is significantly less than we need, 
We have we can take money from other budgets and put it on this budget. And we'll like, try not to do that, but why is there no expansion for food and fuel just this year? I'm sorry? Why is there no expansion for fuel food and fuel this year? Well, food, I can tell you, is because the requests that had been made were picked up by the, um, I guess, the food bank. church to the food bank. The food yeah. bank. Yeah. There's a number of different organizations. Right. Uh, but will they be there next year? We don't know. Um, the fuel, we're, we're, I don't believe, I don't believe that we had a request for heating oil this year, and I, I was surprised by that as well. And it's, Once again, there, there are other programs out there for fuel assistance yeah. too. And has as far as heating is concerned, there is a state heating fuel program and all that, so, right. and, yeah, the, the miscellaneous, I think, accounts for, uh, uh, some automobile fuel. I mean, just looking back historically, when you look at this, I mean, I think it's a big increase from last year. But you look historically, it's not, the 12 to 50 is not much above 2019. Right. What is different here is that the, um, the shelter, food and fuel has not been ever a big piece of the budget, but the shelter has definitely been a big piece. Right. Got it for it. So. Yeah, I think an angle yeah, is not as good as the buckets might not be, but it doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah, it's tough to, tough to know what's going to happen next right. year. And uh, we had one individual who needed shelter for an extensive period of time. And that doesn't happen very often around here because it's, you know, there's places to go or people are related. And, I mean, it's not a... It's not a common occurrence. Yeah. All right, I make a motion that we accept the selections <coughs> 2023 request of twelve thousand two hundred and fifty dollars for direct assistance. Second. We move to the second. Do we have further discussion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Vote. Yeah, we'll get twenty twenty one. Yeah. Two hundred forty three dollars. Moving we'll on, 4583, for exact purposes. This one, of course, this has not changed forever. It's for the purchasing of the flags for Memorial Day for New the town cemeteries and reimbursing the Legion for doing that work. At least this is a, and Guy can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a direct request from the Legion. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't changed for ever. Ever. All right, I make a motion that we accept the selectman's request for 2023 of $1,500 for patriotic purposes. Move. We have a second. Second. Further discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And the last one we're going to be doing this evening is, is going to be 4589, gifts and donations for the new members of the committee. Chip, you might want to explain what this one's about. Okay. Um, gifts and donations is a, um, an ability for the selectmen to recognize people who have served the community or served the local government or um, impacted the community in some positive way, buying flowers, a gift that's not quite enough for my payment on that condo in the Bahamas, so I leave alone. And awards, we also put some award money in there for the awards and people. We have to award the Agricultural Commission this year. Maybe that'll get them to get them. I make a motion that we accept the 2023 selectmen's request of $1,200 for gifts and donations. Second. Move the second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, care of our high items for the evening. Uh, moving on, or I don't have any correspondence for you. Uh, new business, we have the uh, third quarter 
expenses and revenue report. <coughs> Nothing really jumped out at me. There was one thing that I saw, and I think it was in the fire department where they haven't spent things that look like maintenance and replacements and parts and pieces and all that at the end of their budget they haven't spent yet. How does that get dealt with? Well, generally, we, we encourage our departments to submit their receipts when they get the work done. Um, sometimes it waits until the end of the year or the end of the busy season for them to actually get the maintenance work done. A little Adam's pretty good about it. I think <coughs> they would be the better people to ask, and I'm hoping the fire department comes in at our next meeting here at the budget committee. A lot of line items you'll find that really don't get submitted until the third quarter. Okay. Uh, Selectman statement, for example, has not been handed out yet. So are the Christmas money. And are we having a health insurance cost issue at all? I just see the numbers kind of flying. Well, they go back to the, oh, you mean the historical numbers? Yeah, the numbers for this year, for 2020. Okay, it looks like we're going to be way out of budget. I don't think so. Yeah. Where are you? I'm on uh, page two. Yeah, year to date expenses are $180,000. Mine says 225 As does mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, then we probably paid another premium. Mine is as of. Yeah, that's a good one. So, no, we have an agreement at 272108. Oh, okay. So, so that this is the timing issue. Yeah, and actually, I think it's going to go down to 2022. That was when the. Uh, Information was getting earlier. We should have by the end of October. We should have our uh, insurance figures. <coughs> and uh, then Gordon lecturing me about health insurance. Well, the employees of the town do not contribute to their health insurance at all. Okay. At all. That's a, a capital A and a capital A. So. <laughs> It's an annual event. I guess like all it others. An it's event. an annual discussion. Mm -hmm. Another A. It's a triple A. Right, it just keeps going on. What we miss it? Oh. I'm not going to miss it. You are. Okay. All right, so those are the numbers. Any, uh, I know that you've been out, but is there anything else that you'd like to give us an update on? Well, hopefully we're getting the budgets together. I, I did put a word out to the highway department, the police department, the, and the uh, um, fire department, and the transfer station. Those are the biggest budgets they need to get, they need to get done. They have their wage scale currently. So, so there aren't any real issues with that regard. Um, we did get the final MS1 on the 2022 MS1 is um, municipal statement number one, so just for that, um, which does show our our total valuation went up to one billion eight hundred forty-nine thousand two hundred thirty-six. Eight hundred forty-nine million two hundred thirty-six thousand seven hundred twenty-eight. So that's up about twenty-six percent. Yeah, twenty-six <laughs> percent. Up quite a bit. So that's what we will base our tax rate on. I think the only thing we're waiting for for is the county rate. Um, Bob's going to go to the next county delegation meeting. <laughs> and kick some ass because we need that. It's important for us to set that in October so we get the tax bills out in November so that people have time to make arrangements. And I, I guess I'll say it again. I've said it at every committee that I've been to. 
if somebody comes up to you and says my assessment's completely screwed up, there's no reason my my, prop, my property is not worth that kind of money or whatever they say. The ability to come in for an abatement is going to start after the first of the year, and I encourage anybody. And we had the last time we had a major reevaluation, we had a lot of abatements requests, and. The selectmen do look at every single item, really assessing agent. So every single part of that assessment, we're going to look at. And if it doesn't comport with the reality of the neighborhood for real for the land, or the reality of the building for what the building was put in there, we have issued abatements in the past, and I'm sure we're going to issue some abatements in the future. So it's after the first of the year. Just, yeah, it's after the first of the year. So. There's no reason to throw your hands in the air because the process isn't over once the assessment's done. It, it's only just started, really. Um, well, what was the actual, that 1.84 billion, what was the actual increase from the prior assessment? Do you know, uh, it wasn't 26%, it was a lot more than that, right? Yeah. Well, no, it's probably right around 26%. From the last one? Yeah, because I think we're at 1.2 billion. Well, that would be a 5 percent increase. I can't do math as quickly as you can, but I'm a lot older. I don't know about that. So, <laughs> okay, the 2021 um, valuation for taxes yeah. was uh, 1.2 billion. Yeah, so it's a 50 percent increase. A 50% increase? 1.2 to 1.8. Yeah, that's not 50%. Sure it is. Yes, it is. Well, um, is it? Yeah, 600 over 1.2. It's from 1.8 to 1.2, it's 600. 600 over 1.2 is 50%. Round numbers. Yeah. Give or take. Okay. Give or take it. 26% of 1.2 gets us up to 1.5, not 1.8. Okay, hold on. <coughs> Sorry. For taxation. We, we, the current's 1.8, so 1.8 divided by 1.26. It was 1.42, it should be 1.42. Right. I have to do, do the. Uh, you gotta get a calculator on your phone, Jim. I know, I, well, I don't even have a phone. You're at 26%, so right? Yeah, I, I know it was, we were starting out at one point, at, at 26%. Well, that and was the original gap, I think, that before you did the assessment, right? Right. Yeah. right, right, right. And it, but I, I'm taking that 1.2 out of the town of Fort. The taxes aren't based on a 1.8. It's adjustments for uh, okay. military service and old people and yeah. the utilities have some adjustments. So once we have the total amount to, um, for the tax rate, I'll send you an email and you can tell me it's still 50%. It doesn't I'll, really matter. I'll, I'll send you the calculation. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what you do. <laughs> right. You know, it's the $4 million you're going to approve to run the town. It was $4 million last year, it's going to be $4 million this year, whatever. No, but what's important for people to understand is, to your point, is that if the valuations went up 50% for everybody, mm -hmm. but the budget goes up 7%, your right. tax is only going up 7% on average for everybody. They're not going up 50%. Well, the rate is actually rate going to go down. 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 The, like, the people, actual money out of pocket is going to yeah. be a list of 7%. People down. care about the dollar tax. And their taxes are going to go up seven or eight percent, depending on whatever the budget comes in at. Right? The increase in the budget is not going to really. Some people will come right. up more or less, but some people. I've been here for forty-seven years, and my taxes have gone down twice. So it happens. The the land out in the backwoods where I live, the value didn't increase fast enough, and the lakefront went up so fast right. that the rate just drove my taxes. They went down a lot, but you know. It's, the rate went down and my actual out-of-pocket went down. I can't guarantee that's going to be ha what happens this time, but right. it shouldn't have an adverse effect on people. And the other thing, as you knew, is we'll try to hopefully get a budget, but um, we've got the income 
So uh, we we don't. You guys haven't voted on our budget committee has to vote on any income yet. Yeah. No. But a significant portion of this budget is not a significant portion, but a little bit of this budget is going to come back in because we don't spend it all. It isn't. If if you're working under the assumption that every department is going to spend out their budget on December 31st, it doesn't happen. I mean, we're averaging 100 or 200, 300 thousand some years in uh, underspent budget. So that all goes back into the undesignated fund balance, which I think currently is running somewhere around 800,000, 870,000 at the end of 2021. 20, so. And then we can use part of that, or all of, well, we can't use all of it. We could, but we shouldn't. We can use that money to adjust the tax rate down even further. So if we have, I mean, our philosophy in the past has been to try to keep the tax rate on some sort of gradual slope. So it's not doing this. And even though we've had big items like the library or the fire station or whatever, moderating the warrant articles in the total budget in order to, and, and the undesignated fund balance to try to keep that tax rate as right. level as possible. That's it. <clears throat> Our next scheduled meeting is the 25th. Now, the year being next, next week's right? That's it. And would you be out when you were out? Are you going to have budgets ready for us by the 25th? Yeah, we're meeting next Monday, right? The 17th? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, I'll be in tomorrow to talk to, now that I'm not infectious, to talk to the staff about getting. I mean, there are still some little budgets that need to get thrown out here. No, I understand that. And, but, but I'd like to get a, a police or fire or transfer station that you okay. on the 27th. Because as we look at our schedule, it would be nice to have. Uh, we one, two, we have four more meetings between now and the end of the year. It'd be nice to get the big four out of the way. Parks and Rec mm -hmm. is coming in Monday, too. I'm sorry? Parks and Rec is coming in on Monday. Well, there you go. Parks and Rec. <laughs> well, we you still have one. Handle, 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 handle the police station. Deal with, I'm sorry? Handle the police station. Get them in there. <laughs> okay. Right, so, Motion right. to adjourn? No, in other words, so it is going to be worth our while to be here. Yeah, I will know tomorrow. Okay. okay. So if it's not worth your while, I'll let you know tomorrow. Let me know. We can. So, so my one. intention is to get the budget out of the way. Not to I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste our time. Okay. I'm going to cook this Thanksgiving. So I can't you can't be spending November here. I'm not here. spending time with you and these people. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Hearts Turkey Barn. <laughs> okay then, nothing else. Uh, we'll go now and entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you for your patience. We'll Second of those in favor of Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So what I officially want to have you all here. I have trouble with step increases. I've been a selectman for 92 months. I've not seen an evaluation or a performance report on any of our employees. I have nothing to base it on other than personal observation. Uh, be advised. Mm -hmm.